He put something inside of me that others can see that I belong to him. Amen. And it's beautiful because you got to know where I come from. Real, real, real. Before I go any further, you got to know him. Um, I had an identical twin brother. His name was Ryan Keith. We called him Woo Woo. So it was Brian and Ryan. We came out the womb, July 4, 1980. We 39 this year. I lost him at 32. And when I lost my twin brother, it was like the dark day on earth. I, I, I say everybody has that cloudy day where like, you're like, this cannot be real. I've lost friends. I've lost family. When I lost my identical twin, that was a different type of pain. That type of pain, it hurt to be awake. Amen? The only thing that can, that can heal them type of wounds is the blood of Jesus. And it was through my brother's death, through my brother's death that I chose life. The way he chose me, he gave me an opportunity to choose life or death. Because I could have re retaliated. I could have went the opposite route and I wouldn't be here today. Nor would I have my awesome family. I wouldn't see the things of God that I've seen. Why does it take things like that for us to open our eyes? I don't know. But God is so awesome that even in the midst of darkness, his light can shine the brightest if you allow it. Being shaped with purpose. In, in the midst of your valley, in the midst of your pain, God will shape you. Amen? And God soon... And this is, this, is what, this is what I said. God, why would you choose me? He says, I chose you. I'm like, yeah, but why would you choose me? God always seems to choose people that nobody else wants. He used Moses. Moses stuttered, but yet he used him to go into Pharaoh and, and set his people free. God used King David. King David's armor didn't even fit him. But yet he used this little shepherd boy to go defeat this big giant. And the list goes on of the people he uses throughout generation to generation to generation. So I told God, why, why would you? Because I get to travel everywhere. I, I get to see different churches, different leaderships. I was telling someone the other day, like, what I, what I do, what Kingdom Music does, is I get to see the pinky toes of the body. I get to see every little part of the body where the church is not an organization. It's a living organism. It's alive. And I get to see every part of it. I see a righteous remnant. I see people that won't compromise. So I told God, like, why would you, why would you choose me? And he said, because no one else would. And I'm like, I don't get it, Lord. You could have used someone smarter. You could have used someone stronger. Why? Because he said, no one else would choose you, Brian. And I said, I still don't understand. He said, because in the human eyes, Brian, you would always be unfit. If I gave you the car keys and a car, Brian, you would crash the car. If I gave you real responsibility, management, and power, somehow you will find a way to abuse it. I'm like, okay, so why would you choose me? <laughs> My question? He said, because I knew that once you allowed me to renew your heart and your mind, that you will learn to love and forgive. You will learn to share and not withhold. You will learn to build and not destroy. And only then the world, your enemies, your family, including you, will know that everything that I've given to you Everything you have, the reason you're standing, it only because my power and my might. I chose you to display my forgiveness to others. I chose you to display the healing that, you, that, that I do to your heart so you can share with others. I, I chose you to display every good fruit and characteristic of my spirit. And I didn't understand this till God started molding me, maturing me, and sending me into places. I get to go to the Knucklehead neighborhoods, of all knucklehead neighborhoods. God has entrusted me to go into the same places that I can relate to the homeless, to the broken, 
to the knuckleheads, to the pachucos, the cholos. I like, I, I like to preach in the trenches. Today I got a button up on, but any other day I got a fitted and some J's and a hoodie, and we out there. Bible told us. I get to go into, into there, and I get to show them that there's hope. It's different when someone tells you there's hope, God changed me. But when you see someone that speaks the same language as you, you can see in their eyes that it's, that it's real because people can look in your eyes and see if it's genuine or not. There is a form of Christianity that people, they see and they're like, yeah, man, there's, it's a form of godliness, but there's no power in it. There's all these churches on the neighborhood. I see all these different churches. They're like, which one is real? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Which one here going to save my soul? Be honest. That's how it is. All these, but there is this one Jesus that is real. There is this one Jesus that would change. There's this one Jesus that would transform the human heart. There's this one Jesus that would take the, the broken and fix them. It'll take the empty and fill them. That type of Jesus attracts people. That type of Jesus, it draws people. So God said, I chose you to have a, have a new heart or a new mind. I said, well, I want a new heart. He said, well, your heart must be pure. Your heart must be tender. Your heart must be strengthened. Your heart must be a heart of re uh, repentance. When things grieve me, you should be grieved by it. The things that offend me, they should offend you. The jokes that offend me, they should offend you. And you got to understand, I come from a place where all I had was a polluted mind. All I had was what the streets put in my mind. Submitting to authority was something I was against because it was pride. Can't nobody tell me how to run my life. Don't nobody tell me what to do, man. I'm, I'm, I'm me. I'm a, I'm a man like you. That's, that's pride. It's good to have a microscope over your life that lets you know where you're going wrong. Because gr gr accountability accelerates growth. And that's how, that's how, that's how you grow. As a husband, that's how I've grown. With, with finances, that's how I've grown. When I have counsel in every area, from integrity to parenting to marriage, you're, you're looking at as someone, the only responsibility I had was selling dope and robbing. I'd, I go get a job, I get the first paycheck, and then I would flip that and no more work. I, 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 had I got children with different type of women because it shows you the inconsistent unfaithfulness. It, it was, I didn't know how to keep a healthy relationship with nobody. And the things didn't work out the way I liked it. I just run to the next relationship. I run to the next relationship. And next thing you know, I got all these children that I love dearly that are not a mistake. But I had beds that I have to lay in and deal with. God showed me. You choose shortcuts in life. I've chosen you to walk my path. I've chosen you to be pure. I've chosen you to be holy. I've chosen you to, but you know what? I'm not going to force you. You got to be willing to pick up your cross daily. Deny yourself. Suffer with self-discipline. <laughs> Nobody wants to preach that. You don't like that part. A lot of people don't like that part when it comes to suffering and self-discipline. But when we was in the streets and you were signed up for the neighborhood and someone disrespect the neighborhood, you would defend the neighborhood. You would defend your kids. You would defend your block, your image. You, had, you would fight for all the wrong reasons. But when it comes for the right reasons to Jesus, you won't even pick up your cross. You read Revelations, you're like, man, I die, I die for Jesus. If there was a line and they say, deny my faith, then I'll die for him. But he says, live for me. I've already died for you. Live for me. Live for me. Let me invade your heart and your mind. Let me change your way of thinking. Let me show you a new way of fighting, a new way of loving, a new way of forgiving. I've chosen you to be different. Not to be religious. To be different. Like I said, when, I, when, 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 I, when, I, when I'm dealing with men that have hardened hearts, when I'm dealing with killers, when I'm dealing with people that sell drugs, they got all this money, they don't, they feel like, what I need God for? I'm good. I get love in the neighborhood. I got plenty of money in my pocket. What do I need God for? It has to be the truth. They have to see something. That, look, man, I, I know you got paper, but that paper is temporary. You can't take none of them bands with you. I know you got cars, you got rims, you got, you can't take none of that with you. 
Yes, you got a, a group of people that love you, but one day you'll stand before a righteous and a holy God and they'll all have to get away from you and you'll be accountable for every idle word, every thought, every action that you did in this human body. So is it really worth it? Is it worth it knowing that God has chosen you for something greater, yet you say, I'm choose to do me? I choose to do me. So when I'm talking to these men with heart and hearts, I'm talking to these individuals, they only want what's genuine and real. And they can only follow a God, a God who, who they know is in control because the enemy has them so deceived that they don't want nothing to do with the church. They don't want nothing to do with the building. And to tell the truth, some of them will never come in the building. That's why it's up to us to go out there. That's why, that's why, that's why we go feel that right person's heart. And then the seats will fill up. You feel that right person's heart with love. You sit with the broken. Have you ever sit with the, with the homeless man before? Someone less fortunate? Have you ever sit with someone? All he wants you to do is listen to him. Matter of fact, he don't even really, he wants the money, but the money don't mean as much as you sitting down and listening to his story. Because so many people just pass by him. Oh man, man, they don't even acknowledge him as a human. They don't even know that God's chosen him like he's chosen you. They'll give the money just to get him out the way, man. Get out of my way, man. Yeah. God has given us a heart to be tender-hearted, to be pure. Amen? Let me share something with you. Your heart must be pure. James 4, 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Lord, if there's anything in my heart that is not of you, Anything in my mind that is not of you, I'm asking right now, cleanse me. Help me think the things that are holy, God. Let me think the way, let me look at people through your eyes and not my own. Because when I see people through my eyes, I see imperfection. I see complaining. I see everything wrong. If you give me your eyes, I can love the imperfect perfectly. That's why everywhere I go, I, I can go fellowship with any church because I'm not there to disprove their doctrine or beliefs. I'm not there to say my Bible blue, your Bible red. I'm not there to say, hey, I, hey, I don't like the way you do that. I'm just there to let the Holy Spirit be displayed in my life, converse in love and let God do his thing, right? Because when I read the Bible, when I open this up, it's only for one reason. It's to know who the Father is. It's to spend time with God. It's to know his ways. And then the more time you spend with God, his ways are so influential that they rub off on you and they rub off on others. That's it. Real simple. I want, I want to know who you are. I know you, you have plans for me, God. You've chosen me. I, I want to fall in love with your ways, renew my mind, change my way of thinking. Show me. I got baptized on the sixth floor looking at two attempted murders in the Holy Spirit. I had no pastors around me. I had nothing. I had some, some Muslims around me, some gangbangers. I was the only Mexican on that floor that loved Jesus. And I wasn't living for Jesus. I was double-minded. And I say it all the time. I had a hit list, and my hit list became a prayer list. And God, listen to this. Listen to this. God was showing. I, I, this is like he did David. When, he, when David used to protect the sheep, and he used to wrestle with the lions and the bears, before he fought the giants, God was preparing him, right? Well, when I went through this, when I went through this situation and I was looking at 30 years time and I was on the sixth floor, everybody left me. This was before my brother died. This was my lions and my bears. And I felt so alone. I felt so abandoned that, that I wanted to hurt these people. I wanted to hurt my homeboys. I wanted to hurt the girl I was with. When I get out, I'm going to do something bad. I couldn't even sleep. I used to be on my bunk so restless. The wicked have no rest. I used to put the, the, the covers on my head or go to the shower and just sit there and cry tears, man. Because I was hurting inside. I was tired. I was exhausted. I can look at some of your eyes right now. You're tired and you're exhausted. But God has chosen you for greater things. So today, you will get your breakthrough. Listen. 
So while I was in there and nobody was telling me about Jesus, I opened up the Bible and it talked about forgiveness. And I remember saying, Jesus, save me, man. And I remember God saying, pray for those who, who, who hurt you. So I went down every name on my hit list. And I said, I release forgiveness over them, Lord. I release forgiveness over them, Lord. And I did it from in here. Not from right here, in here. From the core of my soul. In a place where the doctors can't even get through with their surgeon instruments. I did it from a place where only God can touch you from the inner core. This is where he chose me to love and forgive, right here. It's so real, unconditional agape love that he has for us. And when you display it to others, it honors God. So when I did this, I got set free. And the same dude that we're looking at 30 years, now my prayers change. I told God, I go do life. I said, just don't leave me, Lord. I go do life. Hey, listen to this. Listen to this. I had peace that I didn't have out there. Even though I was looking at 30 years, for the first time, I was set free inside. And I remember walking around that cell, and I was smiling. I get all my push-ups and my proverbs, and they used to be like, what you so happy for? I'm like, you just don't know. And I remember playing spades. Everyone be at the spade table, and I started changing my music. I wouldn't listen to, oh, he a thug. The, the, none of that music no more. I started putting on uh, uh, Mercy Me. I started putting on a Third Day, all these different songs that I never listened to. And they, hey, we'll all be at the table, and we be playing. I'll be, be singing, I can only imagine. <laughs> hey, and I remember, listen to this. I remember them looking at me and saying, what you bumping, cr uh, country music? And I would listen. I would keep the things of God in my ear. The music that he chose for me, the message that he chose for me, I would keep these things in my ear, and it would keep the peace in this cell block. I started sharing my commissary with people. I started praying for people. The Muslims got converted to Christianity. That cell block became a place of light. God, hey, and then after 18 months, when I was supposed to get 30 years, I go to court, and they dropped them to two aggravated assaults, seven years for a robbery. I was on my way to the penitentiary. I was out in two years. And you would think, after God showed me he loved me, you would think that, that I would follow my path, and I didn't. This is why I'm so key about submitting to authority in your life. Because when I got out of prison, when you get out this home, when you get out this situation where God's feeding you, you think you have enough Jesus where you could do it by yourself, but you need accountability. You need somebody in your life. Hey, look, because I became double-minded. I became a man that had no vision no more. I, for, I started forgetting the promises. I, I started forgetting the path God had for me. Next thing you know, I'm right back with the thorns. Right back with marijuana, with guns, with women, with depression, with suicide. Now I want to kill myself because I get out of prison and this woman that had my baby, now she don't want to be with me. She just had the baby. And I'm like, man, and I wanted to hurt her, really, because I was so, I was one of those jealous Mexicans. You know that one? When you go home, hey, mija, why you wearing that, mija? A double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. I didn't know how to be no father then either. I didn't know how to love myself then. And I found myself in a hotel room trying to hang myself. And God spared me again because he's so good. And my twin brother called me in a hotel room and said, you need to get up here. Me and Monica, my wife now, I didn't even know she was going to be my wife. He said, we're doing kingdom music. And they, they weren't, and I felt bad because I went up there with my ugliness. And even though they weren't fully planted, it was like I brought, I brought the drug addiction back to this area. I brought all this mess. Then go up. Five years later, my brother gets murdered. Most hurtful day on planet Earth for me. I wanted to go hurt them dudes. My brother was saved. He didn't deserve that type of death. I had every reason to tell God why. It says in the Bible that all things work out for the good for those that love them, caught according to the purpose. God reminded me what happened in that cell block when I was fighting my lions and my bears. He showed me that forgiveness set me free then and it'll set me free again if I was willing. I forgave.
I forgave the murders of my brother. And then all of a sudden, this beautiful journey became all over again. The ministry started going. I, uh, uh, I, I started meeting awesome leaders. I started connecting. Pastor Ray got a hold of. We, we met through social media. I got a covering with Ray. To now. To growing, to being mature. Not, not perfect, but a perfect process in Christ. Show me how to be pure. Say pure. It says, 1 Peter 1, it says, Since you have an obedience to the truth, purify your souls for a sincere love of the brethren. Fervently love one another from the heart. Oh, man. You got to love your enemies. You, you got to love the things of God. You got to love the people of God. You got to honor people. You got you to gotta, you gotta esteem the lowest as they're the highest. It's no favoritism. We're not trying to build a church. We're trying to build his church. We're not trying to build our image. We're trying to be created and stay in his image. I go to a lot of places and it hurts, it hurts my heart because the body of Christ, they don't connect. They don't connect like they should in every, in every area. One, they think, this, man, they're going to steal my sheep. Who thinks like that? When you're feeding the sheep the right way, your sheep ain't going nowhere. When your, sheep are, are, when your sheep are loved and, and they're, being, they're being refreshed and refilled and restored and redeemed by the word of God, they're not going nowhere. We call it lock arms. I try to come in every city and get with the leaders so we can lock arms because he's coming back for a bride together. The right and the left hand, every, everything. He's not coming back for one side of the body. He's coming back for a bride. Say tender. Your heart should be tender. Second Kings 22, 19 says, because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself. Say humbled yourself. Before the Lord, when you heard what I have spoken against this place and his people, that they will become a curse and be laid waste. And because you tore your robes and wept in my presence, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. It has to be a, a place where, where, you're, you're, where, you're, where you're repentant toward the things that you've done. It has to be where your heart is, is uh, sensitive. I call it breathing in spiritually, inhaling the Holy Spirit, right? Inhaling the things of God, long suffering, patience, the things I want. And then I call it exhaling the impurity, confessing the things that are not of God. God, I've been selfish. Forgive me. God, I've been religious. Forgive me. God, I've been prideful. Forgive me. My motives, my agendas, I come and I, I, it's like I want you to do things for me, even though it's in Jesus name. Forgive me, Lord. You see how you're excelling it? And the more you do this spiritually, your heart remains tender and sensitive to the Holy Spirit because he chose you to be different. He chose you to be holy. He chose you to be pure. And in the spiritual realm, when, you, when, when you're this type of vessel and you're filled with his love and your weapons of righteousness on your right and your left hand, love and forgiveness, and, and you're kind and tenderhearted to people, and the word of God is still bold, because I'm still a soldado. Don't get it twisted. I'm just a cleaner soldier. I'm still passionate. I'm still bold. You can see in, in, in the message that I preach, I encourage growth. I like to push people to go further in God, but I want to make sure that they're saved as well. Because in the last days, many say, Lord, Lord. Man, we, 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 I did Christian songs for you. I preached behind the pulpit. The last days, hey, I was on the worship team. I paid my tithes. You should have seen my Facebook, Lord. We casted out demons. We fed the homeless. And they say, he says, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You knew about me. I chosen you to know you, but you would never know you. You don't even know my voice. You knew Facebook voice. You knew so social media voice. You knew YouTube voice. You knew every other voice but my voice. You drive, and I tell you to stop and pray. You would sleep, I tell you to awake and pray. You would never let me guide you or lead you, but you would call on me when you needed me. That would be the scariest thing. To do all of this, to travel the world and give him Jesus and preach salvation and then get to the gates. And he says, Brian, I don't know you. You have a form of godliness, but no power. I see bondage. It's frustration. It's fear. It's a fruitless life behind closed doors. I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. 
That's why we examine ourselves daily. That's why we make sure that we're purifying ourselves with the word of God. We clean, we clean ourselves with the word of God. We wash in this word. So we're not walking around stinky all day. Right? Think about it. If the only time you're washing up is when pastor washes you, you stinky throughout the week. That's the only time you, you feeding and bathing. You skinny, your spiritual man don't stink. Just play. The truth though, right? Say sincere. sincere. Your heart must be sincere. Hebrews 10, 22 says, let us draw near to God with the sincere heart. Say sincere heart. And with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Acts 2, 4, 6 says, every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Say joyful. How many of y'all know that God wants to fill your heart with joy? The gladness of heart. Waking up, something, you see, people can affect your happiness, but the joy is a fruit of the spirit. That's something nobody can shake or take. That peace, you, it, it's, it's up to you to protect it and guard it. That's something I didn't have without Jesus. I didn't have that. I remember nights when I, I didn't have nowhere to sleep. I remember nights when, when I was walking in the streets. I remember nights when I felt everybody hated me. I had no joy. I had no hope. And then I find this perfect love in Christ and all these things that he has for me. I'd be a fool to turn my back on him. I'd be a fool not to share the things of God with my children, and with my wife. Even when she don't cook me street tacos. <laughs> Psalm 4, 7 says, you have put gladness in my heart more than in the time that they're Corn and their wine increase. First Samuel 2 1 says, And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. This free gift that He gives you, that I've chosen to set you free, I've chosen you to enter into my rest. That you don't have to wake up every day feeling heavy. He said, All you who are heavy laden, come. I make your burdens lighter. You ever had somebody come pay your rent? You had all your money stored for the rent. Someone says, hey, man, I want to bless your rent. You're like, man, so I get to keep the rest of this? This is going to help out because now I, gotta, I get to go pay the other bills. Didn't it feel lighter? Well, that's what Jesus did with, your, with the sin. It was a big bill. It was a big bill. And he said, you know what? I'm going to pay this big debt for you. You ain't got to worry about this big one. I got the big one. You take care of all the other ones. You take care of the little stuff. I got the big one for you. I take the beat down for you because he chosen you to be set free. Say teachable. Your heart must be teachable. You must be willing to learn, even leaders. My teacher, uh, Pastor Ray said it the other day. He says that uh, when you stop learning, you stop leading. Never let me get to a point, Lord, where I feel like I know it all. Never let me get to a point where I feel like I achieved so much, can't nobody tell me nothing. That's a dangerous place. We were called to choose life or death. Today, you have the choice. He already chose you. What are you going to choose? Humble your heart today. Ask God to reveal things in your life that maybe, maybe you don't even see that there's areas of your heart that is hard in areas where they're religious, areas where you're selfish, areas where there's some pride. I could be honest with myself and say, God, I see that I need, I need all of you because without you, I will crash that car. Without you, I will, I will. I'm not a good steward of the things you've given me if I don't have your wisdom, if I don't have your spirit. Isaiah 55, 7, return to the Lord. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Hosea 4, 
14, 2 says, take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously that we may present the fruit of our lips. Malachi 3, 7. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statues and have not kept them. Return to me. Come home, he's saying. And I will return to you, says the Lord. Does God have to force you to serve him? Are you willingly say, yes, Lord, you can use me. I'll offer my body as a living and a holy sacrifice, God. You can live in me. This is your temple, Holy Spirit. Fill me, Lord. I want all of you. I want to be sealed with your spirit, redeemed by your blood. Because you've chosen me. And because you chose me, I choose life today. I choose rest in you. I put on the righteousness that you have. Not my righteousness, your righteousness. Wherever you're at right now, in your life, if you need to renew this commitment, if you need to rededicate, if you need to just say, look, you know what, Lord? I thank you for seeing something in me that I've never seen in myself. I thank you for forgiving me for things I thought I'd never be forgiven for. I thank you for having a place and a path for me. I want you to come to the front and I just want you to, I want you to get serious with God right now. Make a covenant. Make a covenant with the Lord today. Say, you know what, today I make a, a deeper covenant. You know what, I will go deeper. I will press harder. I'll go farther for you, Lord. You chosen me. I didn't know why you chose me, but you did. And because of you, I stand. Because of you, I have another day to fight the good fight. Because of you, my marriage is restored. My children will get the gospel. My enemies will be forgiven. Your love is so faithful. And I'm grateful, God, for what I'm grateful for all I have in you. Because in you, I have enough. And you don't owe me nothing, Jesus. You don't owe me anything. Your presence is all I want. Your spirit, your peace is all I want. Open your mouth, saints. Be serious. A closed mouth, don't get fed. Renew your vows. Make a covenant. Thank God for choosing you. Thank God because he didn't have to, but he did. And I pray that God fills you with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. He fills you with everything you need this season. He fills you with all of himself. Renewing your mind, teaching you how to love, teaching you how to forgive, teaching you to be teachable. I declare you healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare the deaf ears to open up in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare your blind eyes to receive sight in the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen.